Hey everybody, Fun Stampers Journey Coach Janice Whiting. Today I have a card tutorial to show you and I'm super excited about it because I think it's kind of cute. Um, so the last video I, I was doing a little show and tell and I asked you guys for your opinion on which uh, car or which stamp set that I should do a card on or with. And um, most of you voted that I do a card using this set, which of course is one of my favorite sets out of our new catalog. Um, I love it, I think it's adorable, and I came up with a card that I think you guys will like. Um, so, let me go ahead and show you. Ah! Here he is, so super cute, look at him. So fun. Okay, so this time around, I went with kind of a traditional look for this card in the sense, I say traditional, maybe more ethnic. So um, kind of went with a little kind of Peruvian or Inca kind of style here um, as far as the like geometric patterns and the little like, blanket kind of style. And of course, I left him fairly plain and simple, just adding the glasses for kind of just a fun little extra thing. And the sentiment I chose is lots of love. This stamp set is adorable. So cute, lots of fun things. Save the drama for your mama, or not for your mama, for your llama. <laughs> lots of love, uh, no problema, which is the name of this stamp set. Um, then down here, let's go away, I'll pack a bag. <laughs> and como se llama. Isn't that adorable? Love this one, especially the one about the drama, which um, I want to do a card using that sentiment next. But for this card set, or this card and project, I went with just the lots of love, because it's so cute, and I kept it fairly simple. And actually, even though this card has a lot of uh, design elements to it, it's actually pretty simple to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera the right direction and show you how I did it. All right, stay tuned. All right, so here we go. Here's the card. And once again, the main stamp set that we're using to create this fun card. No problema, it's SS-0481. Super cute, lots of fun stamps. Love it, love it, love it. You're gonna want it. Um, now let's talk about what else we'll need to make this card. So we actually use um, one other stamp set that kind of goes along with this, and it is called Fringe Wall. And it is a background stamp, so you'll notice it's a background stamp. And we're going to use a different kind of stamping technique to um, utilize this one little strip of the fringe here, but that'll be later. Um, and really, that those two those two sets are kind of the main hero. Apart from that, we use our designer choice prints paper, and I'll go ahead and get out the two sheets that we use. So we use this sheet here this kind of got some yellow that goes into like a melanie color oops sorry that's the back of it and then we use this fun pattern and you'll be thinking to yourself hmm that doesn't look like the card that you're showing Janice. <laughs> it's because in this card um this card i'm going to make i'm going to use this exact same design but i'm changing up the papers okay so I'll go ahead and bring out the actual paper set. So it's this set right here, Designer's Choice Prints. In my original card, I've, I use this, obviously, you might have noticed that design, and then some, um, the kind of Melanie color right underneath it that kind of goes with it for the main background. And of course, I'm, I'm changing up the design a little bit, or the colors this time, and of course this one, and a little bit of the yellow from the top. So this is the Designer's Choice Paper Pack. It's double-sided, 12 by 12 prints. Uh, very awesome, it's 65 pound weight paper, really great quality, highly recommend it. Super, super cute papers. Um, so once again, making this card, but using two different papers. So um, I'll have two different looking type cards, even though the design is, exact, is the exact same and the steps that I'm gonna use um, to create the card are the exact same, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with what we need. The well, first thing that we need, apart from the stamp sets, is a uh, card base and just a regular A2 size card base using our whipped cream. All right, that'll be the first thing. From there, and of course you guys know, I'm gonna flip it this way, I always, I don't know why, but I like that better. Um, from there, we I kinda like to work from the bottom up, so the next thing that you'll need is a little piece of that yellow 
paper and this is actually the one that was like yellow that kind of went down to the melon towards the end. I just cropped the top part of it and this one is, it's four and a quarter by four and an eighth, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and adhere that to your card base because the one cool thing about this card is really it's just, even though it looks kind of um, very detailed, it's actually pretty simple. The details are pretty simple. And I chose the light at the top and a little bit darker at the bottom. And so I'm just gonna kind of align that just where it's kind of right in the center of my card base and then press down, okay? All right, from here, you are going to need two strips of this pattern paper piece here that I showed you earlier, okay? The back was this really cool wall, old vintage style, love that. Different look, we're doing this. And basically, you'll notice I just kind of trimmed three-fourths of an inch uh, by four and a quarter off of one of these little rows. And what we're gonna do here is we are gonna create this fringe aspect. Can Do you see that little kind of fringe there on the card? Super cute. I wanted to create, you know, just a card. Give it that look of like, you know, a little fringe on the edge there, you know, a little accent to the blanket. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring out our fringe scissors, okay? So yes, guys, if you have not purchased any of our scissors and you're thinking, all right, guys, I already have scissors, guys. Our scissors are amazing. They're really, and I'm not just saying that, I promise you they're really, really awesome scissors, and these are fringe scissors. They have, um, gosh, one, two, three, four, five sets of blades, and they are really easy to use. So in this instance, we're going to um, cut about a fourth of an inch into this little strip that we cut to create that fringe. And we're gonna do this on both sides of the paper. And the fringe pieces are about an eighth of an inch or so, so you can kind of guesstimate that as far as, you know, you know where to place the scissors for the next cut. Just think about an eighth of an inch apart there. Um, and you're gonna do that till you get all the way to the very, very ends there. And now you have this cute little fringe piece which will go, and you'll layer it right here. And I've already cut two of them, so you'll, you will need to have two cut. And I'm trying to think if I want the black facing the inside. No, I think I'll do it the outside. Okay, and so for this particular piece, I'm gonna go ahead and use our craft glue to glue it down. Um, you have, you've seen my videos, you know that I like to use our craft glue for anything that I might want to kind of shimmy and shift and just kind of get a feel for where I want it. Because even though it does dry fairly quickly, um, it's obviously not as quick and instantaneous as our tape runner. Um, and obviously it is permanent adhesive. And again, it just gives just uh, that few extra seconds of kind of being able to kind of shift it and um, put it where you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and put the second strip down. So again, you'll need two of those, one for the top and one for the bottom. If you like symmetrical kinds of designs, then you'll definitely like this one um, because basically what we do at the top, we do at the bottom. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because you probably saw me trying to ruffle those fringes and actually we will do that. Um, but uh, just wait till the glue dries, okay? Don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, because if the glue's not dry, it might can shift. So we will ruffle those up, but for now we'll leave them as is, okay? Now from here, again, working from the bottom up, you're gonna need two strips of our whipped cream. And again, everything uh, width-wise or lengthwise, whatever you wanna say, is four and a quarter, just regular A2 size. Um, I say lengthwise. So the width of these little two pieces is half an inch, okay? So we're going to go ahead and adhere these guys down as well, right on top of the fringe piece. So you'll be left with about an eighth of an inch or so of fringe. So just try to make sure that's nice and centered and you'll glue or adhere both of the white strips down. If you wanted a little bit more fringe to show, you could always trim it down, this white piece down just a little bit more if you'd like. That glue just wants to be up next to that card so we're just gonna leave it. <laughs> okay, 
And once you kind of have it where you like it, kind of press down a little bit and get it to nice to adhere nicely. Okay, again, we're gonna come back at the and when this is all kind of dried and kind of lift up those fringe pieces so it'll give it a little bit more life. Um, but let's move on. So the next step is we're gonna get some of our river stone uh, cardstock and we're gonna cut it again at four and a quarter, but this time by three and an eighth, because it's gonna go right here in the center um, of that white piece just to kind of give it some nice contrast in color. But before we adhere that, we actually have some stamping to do and this is when we're gonna bring out our fringe wall background stamp. And we're going to use a little technique that is really not that amazing, <laughs> but it works really well for using a background piece um, kind of in a different way. So really we're only gonna use this one little strip and technically I guess I could probably use this strip too. Actually that may be a better idea just to use the strip on the, on the corner there. Which let's go ahead and do that. And we're just gonna ink it up as best as we can. I'm using our black licorice ink. And you don't need to ink the entire thing up. You're just gonna ink a wee bit of it. But just do make sure it's got a good amount of ink on there. Okay, and then you're gonna take your strip and you are going to basically very carefully kind of let, oops, don't drop it on top of the ink, that'd be bad. Lay it right on top. And you know what, I think I need to put a little bit more ink here on the edge. I wanna make sure it gets all inky. Okay, um, and then I like to line it up and make it even. And then once it's even, I'll gently kind of let, carefully lay it down and then just press firmly. Press firmly, kind of burnish it gently, making sure not to move it. And then once you've done that, pick it up and you've got that fun pattern down. So you've got one and let's do two. Because again, this is kind of, most of this card is very symmetrical. So what you do on the top, you also do on the bottom. Okay, so we'll take that second strip and again, kind of figure out exactly where it is kind of even wise. And then once you've got it, press it, da press it down and then smooth away and also press, just burnishing that so it transfers the ink over, okay? All right, from there, lift up. We've got our beautiful design and we're ready to adhere that layer to the center. So kind of pretty simple technique, a great, another great way to use your background stamps. Um, obviously we could ink the whole thing up and we can make a cool background for that, but here is just a great way to just use one little section of it. Okay, we're gonna come back and we're going to adhere this little guy just right on top and um, let's see here, where's our craft glue? Just a little strip will do. I think more often than not, I use my craft glue. Um, I don't know, I guess I like the idea. I like the ability to kind of move things around um, when I need to, pieces and such. Okay, this is my second one. Hey! Second time I've dropped that. I'm glad it didn't go glue down. And then this one goes right on top. Again, just trying to make it make it even, put it right in the center of that white piece. And doesn't it give you quite a lot of um, kind of like dimension and texture? All right, so from here, we actually, I think it's probably dry enough. And at this point, you can kind of come in with your fingernails and just ruffle that fringe up. Lift it up, curl it up. You don't have to be gentle because it's pretty, um, that again, our craft glue is nice and strong, which is excellent once it's dry. And it does dry, I mean, again, it dries quickly, but there is enough time for you to kind of shift and shimmy things if you're quick about it. All right, so there's, oops, that one, nice and fringed up, maybe some up, some down, gives you that cool look. And so we'll do the same thing for the bottom. Come on, fringies. There we go. And this one here. 
I just love the texture that the fringe provides and it doesn't you know it's not taking up too much space it's not super tall or anything and it just gives a really cool it's just kind of a cool look okay so working our way from the bottom up um, let's go ahead and talk about how we got these little triangles. Okay, so with this pattern paper, it was fairly simple to kind of cut around the triangles, and it's similar with this other pa paper as well. So bringing back this um, sheet here that we used, what I did was I put this up next to my um, trimmer, and I'll go ahead and show you. And I cut right along the line, so this is obviously a set of kind of, tri uh, excuse me, um, diamond shapes. Well, I cut right along that middle line and created a strip of just triangles, which would look like this, right here, okay? And I've done, I did that a couple times because you're gonna need 18 little triangles. And I've already cut um, a couple of them. And really, guys, it's it's, pretty easy because once you do the little strip you can just do the triangles pretty quickly from here and you don't have to be you know perfect and exact um, they're just again <laughs> I say again I don't know how many times I talk about being perfect but no one is going to care if your triangle is um, a tad bit bigger than some of the other ones I promise everyone will just be so happy that you sent them a handmade card and they're going to love it. Now, I don't even know if I am in the camera view. Am I in the camera view? Yes, I am. Good. Um, and then what I did once I cut these was I literally just arranged them in the order, this kind of, uh, kind of like a brown, light, dark kind of order. And let's see if I can get nine of these. I think I've got nine of these out here already. And the other thing that I did was I made one line going to the right and the top line going to the left. Again, just another cool little visual um, difference there. So I also used our craft glue to adhere that. And so again, the pattern I used is dark, like the brown, the dark yellow. I think I did that. Technically, you can use whatever pattern you want, and I just went right across. And so I did use our um, craft glue for this, and I think it was nine right across. I guess we'll find out here. Um, do try to get them straight, um, as straight as you can. Again, you can kind of ship them a little bit with the craft glue which is um, ideal for this particular technique. Okay, this little design that you're doing up here. Um, once you get all nine down, you might still have a little bit of time to go back and shift, but I discovered that my first few were pretty well set by the time that I did my nine. So I would just lay them down and kind of go um, nice and straight as you, you know, fix them as you go along, basically, as opposed to waiting to the end, like I did on my first few. Now, if you get a little bit of um, seepage from your craft glue, don't worry. Some, you know, many times I'll try to wipe it off, but honestly, it dries clear. No one will ever see it. Um, it looks like I need another brown, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that piece off here. I might even need a couple more, so I'm gonna go ahead and, actually I think that's good. So basically it's three sets of a brown, a dark yellow, and that kind of ivory color. A dark yellow, one. You know what, it looks like I'm gonna be able to fit 10 in here. Do I want 10? Yes, I do, I do, I do, I do. You know what, I probably spaced them out a little bit more that last time. So, hey, you know what? Make it your own. Okay, so there's the one row and then the next row over here. And let's see, I'll bring out these guys. And again, remember they're going the opposite direction this next time around. Okay, I've got plenty here. So let's see here, dark and then are yellow. Again, try to get them pretty straight. If you can um, 
Go ahead and glue that one down. Again, using our grid paper is wonderful for this kind of technique because you can kind of make sure that your lines are lining up. So you basically you have something to kind of base your um, straight lines off of, it's kind of like guidelines, which is kind of nice. There we go. I'm sure I still will get mine crooked, but again, that's okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to do this as fast as I can here so we can move on. Okay, great. Now we've got the top row and we've got the bottom row with the cute little triangle detail here. So cute, coming together. The other part that is um, next before we hit to, uh, before we get to the llama is this cute little, um, little design aspect up here. And for that, we used um, a piece of our river stone and this was cut to two and a quarter by three eighths of an inch, all right? And this one, Oh, I say that, it was a rectangle, and then we snipped it to create that angle there. Okay, so kind of like a little arrow pointing um, to the llama llama. Okay, and then from there, an, a piece of our whipped cream, and this is half an inch by two, or excuse me, half an inch by one and three fourths. And in this case, I am gonna use my little stamping stool, uh, not stool. <laughs> stamping tool and we use the cute little sentiment that says lots of love um he just fit perfect lots of love and it will go let me get this set here so that doesn't move on me lots of love actually i guess i need to do this on the other side there we go put him right there and i'm going to stamp him a few times because i want this particular sentiment to be nice and in bold. So again, I'm using our black licorice ink, one. And once is fine, but you're gonna notice a difference. Here, I'll zoom in. Once is fine, you could do it once, but I wanted a really, really bold look. And so that, again, this is the one awesome thing about our inks. The more that you um, kind of layer them up, the thicker and more bold, of a look you'll get, which is awesome. That was two, I'll do it one more time and we'll call it good. Awesome, I'm sure you could see the difference between the two there. Um, I wish I had one where it was just stamped once and this one where it's stamped three times, but um, love, love, love our inks, they are fabulous. Okay, move my stamping tool aside. So I've got my lots of love. And my lots of love is adhered using our foam squares, our little journey foam squares. And I'm gonna see if I can grab mine here. This one, the size I'm using here are our small ones. Although I guess I could probably use the big ones too, but eh. sorry. And I just did one on each end. And this guy gets adhered just below the top of that again up kind of putting it up flushed to the left of the of the card okay lots of love now this one is this little embellishment piece is almost done but you'll might recall that i incorporated these cute little tassels oh my gosh okay guys that is from this little stamp so it's the hat which i can't wait to make him with the hat but i was like these little tassels are adorable and they would be so cute to kind of hang off the sign here and so what we do here is and i've already created this but i'll go ahead and show you the steps here just take a just a scrap piece of paper you can see where i did this initially um um, and grab your stamp and you're gonna stamp him twice once and really all you need is that bottom portion his little tassel area and chicken legs which is what I call because <laughs> don't they kind of look like chicken legs like from here up <laughs> anyway you only need that section okay so you'll do this in white and then you'll grab um, another really spare piece of your river stone then you will ink up just the little poof balls, the, um, I don't know what to call those, I guess there's the tassel-y kind of areas. Okay, just those two things. Then you're going to fussy cut that out, which I have here. 
one and two, okay? Then you would um, do one of two things. Either you can go ahead and adhere them and then cut these out, or you can even bypass this step if you don't like fussy cutting and just color this gray and then cut it out. Um, but I had already gone and cut these guys out and so we'll just do it that way. Um, and basically I'm gonna use my um, craft glue again, put a little dot in each little poof ball, puff ball, I don't even know what you call these. Somebody tell me in the video comments. <laughs> um, and then now you've got these cute little gray tassel -y type embellishments to put onto your sign. So cute, so cute. Okay, so in my original card, I used the white sweet candy drops. And our sweet candy drops are so fun because there's various sizes from big to small. Um, and this card, since I've kind of got this kind of yellow gray theme going, I'm actually gonna use one of these yellow candy dots. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those out of there. And I'm gonna put him off to the side actually because I'm not quite ready for him yet. Um, I'm going to adhere one of these guys kind of lower and put a little bit of glue, not a lot, just a wee bit. Gonna have him kind of go down and kind of at an angle, so kind of off to the right. And then this guy, I think I'm gonna trim him just a little bit so that he's not too long. And he is gonna be adhered just a little bit up and to the left of the first. So, you know, it's kind of like they're crossing paths, you know, a wee bit like that, isn't that cute? And then our Sweet Candy Drops, um, which are um, self-adhesive. Okay, there is a little bit of adhesive there. Well, doesn't need any glue, just goes right up on top. And actually, I'm gonna scoot that over. Actually, I'm gonna see if I can scoot him over a little bit more. There we go. And then the candy drop right over the center of him. So cute. Don't you love that little detail, guys? It's like in the details. It's so precious. I love it. Lots of love. Okay, so guess what? We have finished the base, and we are ready to um, do this little dude right here, Mr. Hero of our card. So I'm going to put that aside for a little bit, and I'm going to bring out um, Mr. Dude. Now, here he is. He is awesome. Love him. And let me remind you, there are so many fun options for him. Oh my gosh, the scarf, the camera, the hat, this little doll. There's so much. There's so much. I know. And I didn't choose any of it except for the glasses this time around. But don't worry. I'll make one with him all decked out, I promise. I've already stamped him on some white just for the sake of time. Um, because I try to kind of do everything kind of quick because really I have a feeling the coloring of him is probably what you want to see um, a good bit of. So um, the coloring tool that I chose to use for this um, are our color burst pencils. Um, they are a wax-based colored pencil with a nice fine oil coating. 48 beautiful exclusive colors to Fun Stampers Journey. Um, so if you like um, our colors in our kind of um, color collections, then those are the pencils to get. Now for this llama, I chose a few colors. I'll go ahead and grab those out. It's a mix of quite a few colors to create him. So again, here's my original llama llama. And um, these are the colors that I chose to create with him. So eight, uh, I was gonna go in order here. Um, I don't know, I know some, some of you probably don't care, but I thought might as well. So we have eight, 37, 38, 39, 43, and white, which is our 48, okay? Now to begin with, okay, in order to kind of create a nice soft look, excuse me while I get a drink, you can, you can accomplish that various ways. In this instance, I am gonna lay down a, um, a layer of white because this is going to soften up um, anything that I put on top of it because it's already has, it's already, you know, it's giving it 
a layer of this white to kind of um, go over and it just again it just acts as a softening of the colors okay so I am going to go ahead and just kind of and I do work in sections so I mean I could color every bit of him right now but I like to work in sections so I'm just doing his head neck kind of area first and his little ears um, so I've gone ahead and done that now you'll notice that my white tip is flat there and I did that on purpose you know sometimes you would like a nice pointed tip um, but more often times than not if you want to get a nice soft coverage um, you don't want a, a, a sharpened tip a dull tip is actually great your sharpened tips are good for details and things like that which is um, great um, but generally speaking when you're coloring a dull tip is ideal all right now the next thing that I did is I brought along uh, pencil number eight which is kind of like our peachy color and I took him and I kind of went on top of the white and around the edges. I just went a little bit in his ears. And I'm going to go around his mane. I guess you call this his mane. <laughs> around his head and neck. Again, I just kind of get the idea that the edges of Mr. Llama are maybe a little darker, either because of dirt or just natural coloring. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking probably maybe both. And this just kind of gives a little depth and dimension to Mr. Llama. Um, I also went a little bit around his little, not what is a snout, I guess. Yeah, maybe around his eyes a little bit. Give that snout kind of look. And maybe a little bit inside, but not too much. Okay, there. That's probably good. All right, now from here I went and I colored his his snout and the inside parts of his ears. Um, and I did try to make sure I didn't have too sharp of a point. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly color the inside of his ears, lightly, ever so lightly. And then the inside of his snout. So one kind of trick to coloring with colored pencils is don't press hard right away. I go with layers and just kind of work your way from light to dark. It's a lot easier to kind of control and manage everything in that way. Maybe I'll put a little bit underneath his eyes. Probably not much, but there's that. Okay, now from here you can take one of our little blending stumps. And we do have a couple of different sizes there. Um, the wonderful thing about these stumps is that we, um, they last forever really. Um, but they also, we also have this kind of little sharpening kind of, uh, I say sharpening, kind of gets rid of some of the previous colors that you're using or that you used and it clears out and cleans out your little stump. And again, um, makes it so that you can reuse it over and over again without worrying about uh, color contamination and kind of messing up your deal. Uh, so from here you can take it and you can soften it up. Um, just kind of smooth it out a little bit. It does lighten it up. So keep that in mind and it just kind of goes over it. Um, you can also use um, baby oil or Gamsol. Um, those are also some products that you can use to kind of create a softening look. Although this stump is working great, and so I'm going to stick with it. I might come back and add a little bit more. Again, the stump does kind of, uh, it basically kind of smooths out your lines, which is nice, especially if you're looking for a nice smooth look. But it, because it smooths out, it technically is like moving the color around a little bit. So you may want to add a little bit more once you're done. Okay, so got him. And then now let's go ahead and do the body. So I'm gonna come, and again, I'm just gonna give a layer, just lay down a layer of the white. Again, the reason I'm doing this is I, I want it, I want my colors that I put on top to kind of float and be softer than not. And so that is the reason for my white layer. All right, which is, I know it's kind of hard sometimes, like, did I cover it all? 
but I'm sure we did. Okay, now from here, I'm gonna go around again with my number eight and just go around his edges, the tail here. Um, you'll notice that, you know, there is a difference if you try to color just directly to the paper before you layer on some white, it'll be a lot darker, starker. Um, so again, it's just a different tip and technique that you can use. And on the bottom, I'm actually going to go up a little bit on his feet. There's legs, the bottom parts of his legs, I guess. Um, and because, you know, he's been tromping around and it gets dirty down there. So lightly. Okay kind of got him all colored up with the number eight. And from here, I'm just gonna go from um, my 38, 39, 43, excuse me, 37. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of these colors and um, just a little layer. Because there's so many of the colors here, I'm just gonna add a light layer of each. So not a lot. So that was 37, here's 38. So these get progressively darker you may or not be able to tell. And I, there's no necessarily like rhyme or reason that I'm, other than the progressively darker um, because I like to layer from uh, light to dark. I like the idea of multiple colors in one because again, it just gives a really cool dimension. Um, with this one, I'm just kind of doing some flicking motions starting from the bottom and going up. Looks like I got a little bit out of my lines, but that's okay because I'm going to die cut him out. Okay, um, maybe a little darker towards the bottom. Just a little. And then the last one is number 43, which has a little bit of, which is the gray that I use for the nozzle. And I'm just going to put a little bit in here. Just a few. All right. There he is. Now I'm going to take that uh, blending stump and I'm going to come and I'm going to blend in those colors. Do you see how that softens everything up? Um, it just kind of mixes and melds those colors together. You can kind of sort of see the difference maybe. Let's see if I can hold this up. There. It's much softer. This has texture and you may want the textured look. It's completely up to you, the look that you want, okay? For me in this instance, I wasn't necessarily going for texture so much as just um, a mix of colors and I kind of liked the soft look, at least for this particular one. So we're just gonna soften him up, go back and do the same thing with the areas that I went around. Excellent. All right. So Mr. Llama is complete, and actually I'm going to go ahead and take my eraser and erase this little guy right here. You can erase colored pencil because he's pretty close to where I'm going to be die cutting, which again is the next thing that I'm going to do. And we've got the die set that goes with him, of course. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and bring my Amaze machine over. Now, I am going to zoom out a little bit so we're not totally um, kind of overtaken when I move him over here. I do like to show you guys this process just in case there's one of you guys that's new to die cutting. So this is our die cutting machine, one of our die cutting machines. And actually, I'll probably zoom out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. There we go. So you can at least see the majority of it. We've got um, our base plate and two cutting plates. Our directions for using the machine are right there on the, it is a magnetic plate. We're gonna put the cutting plate down first. My little llama with the die that fits perfectly around him. And you just kind of have to get it to right where you need him to be. I think that's probably pretty good, right? Um, and then your cutting plate on top, stick it inside, and then just roll away. Normally, I wouldn't have my grid paper underneath because it makes it kind of shifty, but eh, it's all right. Once he's through the machine, take your plates up. He is popped out, and voila. Isn't he cute? 
Love him. Okay, so we've got him all colored, all die cut. And really that last step, um, I say the last step, the last thing I was going to do was I was going to put his glasses on him, and I'm so sad that my little glasses stamps is probably stuck to something somewhere on my very, very messy desk. <laughs> Um, so I'm not going to put his glasses on. kind of makes me sad, but that's okay. He's not going to have glasses this time, but you can see the one, the original one who, where he did have glasses, but we're going to go ahead and uh, attach him to the card and we're going to use our large, um, foam squares and we're going to do one on the top, one on each of his legs. One right there and one towards his back. And he just pops right up and it's kind of like puts, he kind of makes the card. He just kind of gives that card a little air of coolness because he is so cool. And he'll fit, let's see, right over here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. He'll fit right over here, Mr. Cool Llama. And that's it. He's done. Let me go ahead and bring back my other little guy. His um his brother from another mother. <laughs> um I say that. There he is. There he is. Okay. So there you go. What do you think? Okie dokie. I found the glasses. They were like stuck to the bottom of my computer. No words. Okay, so here's this little guy with glasses, because I just think the glasses kind of make the look. Um, isn't he cute? So cute! So again, we've got the little tassel-y fringe, little tassels on the deal. We've got his little um, Mr. Llama color up. I just, I might go back and add a little bit darker within the ears, um, but he's so fun. Now, one of my ladies, Deidre, if you're watching, thank you, uh, gave me the idea of doing stitching right across through the little triangle pieces to kind of give it a little extra ethnic deal. And so I did that with my first card. And I do like it, Deidre. It looks awesome. So I may go ahead and come back and do the stitching on this little guy as well. But there you go. Same card, same exact same design just two different color palettes. Okay, so this one with the yellow, the gray, the browns, and this one with more of the melon and the teal um, in it. So, so fun. Do you like him? Do you like him? He's so cute. I wanna do some more and include all of his garb, like his hat and glasses and camera and the or scarf, just the whole deal. I wanna deck him up and then we're gonna use to save your drama for your llama stamp sentiment. So cute. Okay guys, um, that's it for me today. If you liked what you saw and you're inspired to create and wanna create using what I used, then you can go to my website, which is www.funstampersjourney.com forward slash Janice Whiting. Um, that will take you to my online store and you just click shop and you will shop like you would any online store. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Comments down below. I did promise that I would also, um, maybe I didn't promise, but I, I you know, whatever. Um, some of you ladies also asked that I show you what I did with my peony uh, stamp set. So I will give you a little sneak peek to which video is coming up next. Oh, completely different from the llama. So fun. Now you might be thinking, whoa, I can't do that. That's kind of crazy. It's not, you can do it. So this is one of the things I love to do. I love to show, I love to break down cards to show you how you can do it. So I will break this down and is it work? Yeah, it's, it's work, but it's fun. It's fun. Okay. Um, and show you how you can do this. And I am going to add a little bit of a something different here. Somebody else gave me a great idea. Everybody has awesome ideas. So I'm going to try to change this up just a smidge, but the overall design will be the same. So that is coming up next. So stay tuned. Thanks so much, and we will see you later. Bye.